Uh, Hayden, welcome to the Hidden Why podcast. Great to have you here today. Yeah, honored to be on. Thanks for having me on. It should be fun. Your room looks very pink. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it a light or a color? Or is it just mm. the time of the day? No, it's just a lighting back yeah. there. So I've got um, a little bit of a purple light that's supposed to add a little bit of color to the room because otherwise the video gets a little white. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good little trick, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ho hopefully it's not reflecting on my face, but rather in the background. So it gives yeah. a little mood to the room. You'll notice a lot of content producers doing it. It's a little hack that kind of makes everything you do look a little better. So that's awesome. All right. I like it. Okay. Well, mate, welcome to the show. You've got a bit of a story behind you. So I want to get into that to start with. And then uh, I know you've got some, some ideas and advice that we can help um, people with as far as Amazon and Amazon sales go. But tell us a bit of your backstory. Yeah. So look, I started when I was really young, uh, came to the United States as a refugee immigrant family, created my first company by the time I was 15. And, you know, while I was in my teens, what was I that left. It was called Herbal Ecstasy. And mm -hmm. I left home when I was 15, basically had nowhere to go, nowhere to sleep, no friends, slept in an abandoned car, slept in abandoned buildings, wherever I could. And I found a mentor. And I got involved in the EDM rave scene, the electronic music scene at the time. I managed to get myself a mentor that was coaching me in business. I invented this drug, this magic herbal pill, and it became a phenomenon. And documented, we created over a billion dollars in revenue our first year in business. And I was this teenage multimillionaire with this billion dollar plus company. And it was a wild ride. And that was my, my that first venture. A, a very wild ride at um, such a young age. Yeah. I was 16 billionaire. Yeah, crazy. Well, I wasn't a billionaire. The company uh, oh, broke a billion dollars in revenue. Yeah. Right. So, um, but of course now with kind of the disruption era of TikTok and Instagram videos, everybody's a billionaire. Everybody's done that. But this was, you know, pre-internet. This was pre uh, all that stuff, pre-social media, we broke a billion dollars in revenue. And I remember going from basically sleeping in like these abandoned buildings, sleeping on the beach in Venice Beach to having a company with 200 employees, a collection of exotic cars. I remember falling asleep in my Lamborghini, drooling on the passenger seat, walking into my office and the news breaks that we made a billion dollars in revenue. And Sam Donaldson with Nightline interviewed me. I had Montel Williams wanting to fly me out to his show in New York. I did his show, uh, two Newsweek covers, LA Times, London Observer. I think you're in, are you in Australia? Yeah. 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 So I, I was in Who, which was the equivalent of People magazine there. Yeah. We were all over. And I remember walking into my office just thinking, fuck, man, I don't know how much a billion dollars is. I literally did not know how much a billion dollars was. I was like, is it 50 million, 100 million? And then the second thought that I had, Lee, was I think I might have to get an accountant now. Yeah. And then I very quickly learned that accountants are not the guys that count the money in duffel bags in the trunk of your Lamborghini. I learned that very quickly. And by the way, the Lamborghini has a frunk and open part in the front because, of course, the engine's in the back. So people don't message me about that. But I learned very quickly that accountants don't like counting cash. And it was, it was a wild ride. It was a funny ride. From there, I went on to inventing vaporization technology, the forerunner to what today are the vapes that everybody uses, pioneered that in the early 90s. Um, and then from there, I went on to learning about this platform that this little nerdy guy, you might have heard of him. His name is Jeff Bezos was starting. Mm. And as I looked at that, I thought, man, something about this guy is, leaves a little bit more to be learned. There's something about this Jeff Bezos character that's a little more than meets the eye. Yeah. And I started yeah. researching and learning and I, I saw, wait a second, this is a guy who's getting cheap money, billions from Wall Street, bringing it into Silicon Valley and using it to grow what's going to be the most disruptive company of our time. And so I put all my eggs in the Amazon basket in the last 10, 11 years, I've become one of the leading experts on Amazon. And now what I do is I teach people how to create recurring revenue streams by starting Amazon businesses. I tell people today is day one. 
This is the ground floor of becoming an Amazon seller. After COVID, after all this stuff, we're sitting here. Now is the time for people to get involved starting Amazon businesses because more millionaires, more billionaires, more freedom is created by this incredible disruptive platform that Jeff right. Bezos has built. Oh, Jeff, eh? Good old Jeff. So tell me. Good old Jeff. Herbal XC. Vaporizing, pioneering vapor. You mean, see, everyone with a vapor these days it seems to be the trendy thing, huh? Yeah. Why wouldn't you yeah. just retire? Say again. Why wouldn't you just retire? Well, I, you know, look, I, I got plenty of money to do whatever it is I want to do. I travel the world with my family. We have a, a grand time traveling the world. We do all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. And I've got a collection of exotic cars. We do the whole thing, you know, travel first class. We go on great trips. We stay in great places. And most of the stuff we like to do actually isn't that posh. We, we like to go to cool exotic places and learn about cultures and have adventures, which really is what life's all about. I think it's about collecting these experiences, which is what I teach my kids. I'm a family guy and my whole life is based around family and, and learning. And you know, what, what I really enjoy more than anything else is inspiring people to have that same level of freedom that I do. And what's freedom? Freedom yeah. to me is being able to do what I want, when I want, with who I want, and how I want. And if I don't want to do something, being able to look someone straight in the eye and say, fuck you, fuck off. I don't need to do this. I've got fuck you money. So I'm at a point in my life where I have fuck you money, where Ooh. I don't have to work, but Ooh. I do it because I feel a sense of mission, a sense of purpose to inspire people, to dispel all the bullshit that's out there and to get people excited about creating predictable recurring revenue, mm. which is what it's all about now. In the Amazon. So you reckon it's, it's never too late, hey? Because I guess a lot of people out there would be going, oh, Amazon, you know, everyone's into it and yada, yada, yada. But you reckon today is just a good day to start as any, if not better. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it is too late. Yeah. And sometimes people really do suck. So the first thing I tell people, and, and look, I'm not a guy who, I'm not like a guru who's like, you can make it, buy my course, do this, do that, bullshit. There's some people that are failures and there's some people that will never make it. Now, doesn't mean that you can't try, but there's some people that just weren't cut out for the life of an entrepreneur. And you got to do some fucking soul searching. You got to get out there in the world. You got to do some self-reflection and see if you're okay with taking a risk. See if you're okay eating top ramen for a while, because you could have a very comfortable life working for somebody else and selling your hours. Entrepreneurship is not that. Entrepreneurship is being comfortable with risk. Entrepreneurship Ooh. is being able to get out there and to put yourself out in a way to say, you know what? I might fail. I might colossally fucking fail. But what I'm not going to do is quit. Yeah. And if you have that attitude, then you have a shot, a shot of making it. Then you fucking get in line with the other 1,200 people, 12 million people, 12 billion people who are doing that same thing. And now we got to find you a competitive edge. And that's what I teach to my students, my students who I, I, I uh, teach how to sell on Amazon. How do you get reviews? How do you build on that platform? And what I teach them is, hey, this might not be for you. Entrepreneurship isn't for everybody. No. But if you have the right attitude, if you're the right person, but people will lie to you. People will tell you, oh, buddy, you know what? Anybody can do it. Just try. It's good enough. Just buy this course, buy this book, do this thing. Everybody wants your fucking dollar. But not everybody's going to tell you that, dude, you might actually fucking suck. And that's a great place to start off with. Because if you suck... At least you fucking know you suck. And you yeah. can say, you know what? I'm going to start improving. It's, I do uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu here. I'm a student, just learning, beginner. I've been doing it for a few years now. And one of the interesting things that my instructor uh, has taught us is that you want to get on those mats and grapple. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is a grappling bar, kind of like wrestling. Yeah, and yeah. one of the things you want to do when you get out there, you want to win. You want to dominate. Because it's a very alpha sport, um, you know, having to do with... Uh, being able to dominate and get in a dominant position. But mm. sometimes, sometimes you just want to get in a less shitty position. And that less shitty position leads to a even less shitty position until you can get free. And yeah. then you can get into a position where you can be more dominant. And life and business are like that. It's a perfect example of life and business where you think to yourself, man, if I can get myself into a little bit more freedom, 
free up a few more hours. So I don't have to sell my hours for money. The greatest injustice that's been done to entrepreneurs, that's been done to people is this belief that they have to sell their hours for money. Yeah, It's a sin. Mm. It's a real sin. And to break away from that, you need to take a risk. Yeah. And that's where we separate the entrepreneurs from the entrepreneurs. I like it. I like it. You're a passionate guy, huh? Passionate about this. What's, I think um, so, but I'm not sure that that really fucking matters, man. You know, people, have, it's, yeah. What do you, how do you determine or can you determine whether someone's suited for entrepreneurship or not? I think the desire has to be there, but more importantly, there is one litmus test and one test only. And that's that you have to be willing to do whatever it takes in order to succeed. Doesn't mean you have to do whatever it takes to succeed, but you have to be willing to do whatever it takes in order to succeed. And that's really going to be what's going to be the determining factor, what's going to separate the men from the boys. Yeah. So you don't think passion's important? I mean, I said you're very passionate and you don't think it's relevant? Look, I think passion is an excuse. And that's why I say it's not, it's not that important. And I'll tell you why. Because when you look at successful people, right? You're going to ask Mark Zuckerberg or you're going to ask one of these guys. People will go ask them and they'll be like, hey. And, and this is, this is uh, perfectly exemplified in the teachings of Scott Adams, the drawer of Gilbert. He wrote a book called How to Fail at Almost Anything and Still Win Big or Success, uh, something like that. Great book. Yeah. Um, and, and he talks about this as well. And it's, it's the fact that you go ask somebody like Zuckerberg or Elon or one of these successful guys and you say, hey, what's your secret? Now, this guy is thinking to himself, dude, I am way fucking smarter than you, but he's not going to tell you that. That would make him look arrogant. That would make him look like an asshole. So what's he going to say? Yeah. He's going to say, it's the passion. I'm very passionate about what I do. Do you really, for one minute, think if Elon Musk was making shoelaces that it would be any different than rockets to space? Our shoelaces would be weightless and free-forming around our shoes, and he would change the world of fucking shoelaces. Do you think if Jeff Bezos was making pottery, that that wouldn't change the world of how we eat and pottery and all that? Of course not. But it's not okay for them to tell you the truth. And the truth is that they're smarter than you. Now, you can compensate for lack of intelligence by working harder, which is something that's missing in society today. People think that they can just buy the course, buy the book, buy this, buy that. And when they fail, they're like, oh, you know what? It didn't work. It's not my fault, but I bought that ticket. I bought that, that promise. I bought that fucking lottery ticket. And I think that's all that matters. It's a cop out. It's an excuse for not doing the fucking work. Yeah. Nobody asked you to try to succeed. We ask you to succeed. And if you fail, you are the only person responsible for that failure. There is one person. And that is another key difference, a key differentiating factor be- between people that are successful and people who are not, is that they take responsibility for everywhere they're at. And I'll tell you this, anybody who Anybody who wants to achieve success and they're not at a place that they're happy with right now in this moment, you have to take responsibility for every single thing in your life. That means no more fucking excuses. No more. She did that. I was born in the slums. I was this. I was that. Daddy was never around. I didn't have a mentor. All that stuff you put aside and you say, I did it. I put me here. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, You come from a place of power. Now you can look at yourself and self-reflect and say, you know what? I'm a fucking asshole, but I'm willing to work on that. Yeah. You can say, you know what? Maybe I'm not an asshole, but I have been doing things incorrectly, the wrong way, and I'm going to change it. It's one of the things we teach in the Amazon course is I tell people innovation is dead. Stop trying to fucking innovate. There's no money in innovation. What you want to do, because everybody's got these great ideas of how I'm going to build a better mousetrap and the world's going to be banging on my door. No one gives a fuck. What you want to do is you want to find a market. You want to find a vulnerability in that market 
And then you want to tell a better story. You want to offer more value. And now you feed the market demand. It's a much quicker path to money. And believe me, I've made money fast and I've made money slow. And making money fast is much more fun. Yeah. So the idea of doing an Amazon course and this, this idea of um, not exchanging time for money, very attractive to anyone listening out there, without a doubt. Now, we don't want yeah. to give false promises because obviously, as you just said, you have to be intelligent to some capacity. Passion's irrelevant. I don't understand why passion's an excuse, but that's fine. So Look, the reason why it's an excuse, if you want me to tell you, is because, like I'm saying, it's, it's great to be passionate, but people are passionate about all kinds of things. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to lead to financial success for you. And there's people, and I can name tons that are very wealthy and very successful and have absolutely no passion. I know a guy who's made billions, literally billions. He is a fucking billionaire from selling real estate. You want to talk real estate with him? He will kick you out of the fucking restaurant. I was sitting with him the other. He's like, I don't want to talk about real estate. I'm like, yeah, why? Are you passionate? When you're talking about something every day, you may not want to talk about it. But the fact is, I'm in real estate myself, actually, so I can relate. Yeah. Uh, I, I wake up. I'm, I'm everything. Every moment is about <laughs> what I do, my career. Now, that yeah. may not be something I want to talk about at the dining table because I want to switch off occasionally. But that's yeah. me, passion. You know, it's that dedication to whatever art it is, making shoelaces, selling real estate, doing something on Amazon. I think you have to have some drive behind you. Yeah. And I would think successful yeah. people have that as well. How do you, I mean, with Amazon, can we look at an example of how a uh, success story maybe from one of your people that have done your course, what they've done and, and how you go about it? Yeah, I mean, easy. I'll give you an easy one. My wife. Yep. So I, right now we've got about a hundred and something students in our course. Our course is very small. And by the way, Lee, for any of your listeners or viewers, I have a one hour course teaches you everything you need to know about Amazon. I wanted to tell people it's normally 200 bucks. I'm going to offer it for free to every single person who reaches out to me from your podcast yeah. and uses code hidden Y. So if you guys are, are listening to this, if you're watching this, reach out to me directly by email. I answer every email personally. It's D A R K. Z E S S at gmail.com. Reach out to me directly. And what I will do is I will go ahead and send you the one hour Amazon course absolutely for free. Everything you need to know about selling on Amazon. And again, reach out dark zest, D A R K Z E S S at gmail.com and FBA seller course.com. FBA standing for fulfillment by Amazon. So, what's the email address we need to know? Dark zest at gmail.com. Is that right? Yeah, that's D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S -S at gmail.com. Email me, mention Hidden Why in the subject, and I will give you the $200 one-hour course for free, no credit card required. You'll never hear from us again if, if you don't want to, just so that we can inspire you to create Amazon companies and products and get them out there. That's, and so the example- I know it's there as well, guys. Yeah. I've got great people who are involved in our course. I've got an uh, engineer. I've got an oil engineer from one of the biggest oil companies who mm. wanted to create a second source of recurring income and revenue. So he's doing that now as just something where he can put a couple hours on the side and get another 10, 20,000 bucks a month. My wife, when we had our kid, said, hey, I want to take your course. I said, what? My wife's a publicist working for the United Nations. She worked directly under Kofi Annan. And I said, all right, well, if you want to do it, you got to take the course. So she took the course. She started a company. She now is a seven-figure Amazon seller, and she does it part-time. She's a full-time mom, and part-time, she uh, still you know, she still does some public relations, but her main course of business, her main source of revenue is selling on Amazon. She sells greeting cards, jewelry, all kinds of stuff on there, which is one of the great things about Amazon is that it enables you, it allows you to have this freedom. So you're getting a product, you're rewrapping it, and you're putting it out there to a vulnerable market. Not necessarily. Uh -huh. what, you do, what you're doing is you're finding a market vulnerability. Yeah. You're finding uh, where the competitors are weak. And then you're creating a, your own product. You're creating a private label product that you are branding. You're telling a better story. And then you're putting that on the market. Yeah, yeah. I suppose not so much the idea. I guess everyone probably has got ideas about what they could do on Amazon, um, but about creating the product. I mean, have you got any advice there on how we go about that, whether it's a, a greeting card or a hat or whatever? Yeah, we teach that all the time. So yeah. 
the first mistake that I made when I was younger, Lee, was that I innovated and I would find a product. And then now I would have to go out and educate people onto why they need that product. It's the wrong way to do things. The right way to do things is to find a market and then feed it what it needs. So what we do is we use specific tools. And again, it's in the one hour course. I'll give it to everybody for free so they can learn how to do it. Yeah, yeah. But we teach you how to spy on the market, spy on the competition, find out who's selling, who's not selling, what's wrong with them. Are they not telling a good story? And then go in and create your own version or even a vertical of that product, something similar, yeah. but maybe a little bit different. You offer more value. You're two for one. Maybe they're battery powered. You're, uh, you've got a power adapter. Maybe you've got two batteries instead of one. Little tweaks that you can make that can give more value to the end consumer. And then you become a decision architect. Mm -hmm. You make the consumer feel that it was their idea all along to buy that product when they land on your listing. And that's how you succeed in the Amazon marketplace. Yeah. It's exciting, huh? I'm very excited about Amazon. Very excited. It's, it's day one. We are on the ground floor. And, and, and look, if you are interested in business, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, now is the time to start getting involved in, in Amazon. And it's already so big. I mean, it started off as a you know, bookseller, I suppose. Now they sell everything and it's just instantaneous almost. You can go on there, check out what I want, anything really. Yeah. Find it, buy it, click it at my door the next day almost. That's right. Yeah. They've taken the uh, friction out from having a sale. That's the great innovation of Jeff Bezos is yeah. that you can click. If you yeah. don't like it, yeah. they take it back. It's the greatest thing ever. That, that whole idea of taking the friction out. I like that with the whatever you do, service products, trying to make it yeah. as easy as possible for people to do business with you. Yeah. yeah. But um, I'll stick the link in the show note anyway. The email there, guys, reach out, get the hour download. And um, we'll go from there, mate. Thank you for coming on the show today. Really been a pleasure. Yeah, my honor, Lee. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really honored to have been on your show. And by the way, I'll mention to everybody, my book, Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult is out now on Amazon. The audiobook just dropped on Audible. So please check it out. Leave me a review. We have a podcast too, and we'll share this on our show as well. Try to send you some viewers and subscribers. That's Hack and Grow Rich on Google, Spotify, anywhere you go. Podcasts are found, Apple Podcasts. You can find Hack and Grow Rich. So like and subscribe and really appreciate you having us on. And of course, the course, anybody that wants it, reach out with code, the hidden Y in the subject heading, darkzess at gmail.com. D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S. -S. I'm sure Lee will include it in the show notes. We'll stick it in the show notes, guys. Check it out. Shahin, thank you so much for coming on, guys. Till next time, peace, passion, and purpose. See you soon.